Hello and welcome back to part 8 of my top-down snowman survivor tutorial series. I honestly think 8 parts is long enough so we're going to try and finish it off with just a little bit of UI and then have the player um, die and jump to a different scene so that we can uh, restart the game and restart the level. And what this gives me a chance to introduce is custom signals. We've used signals already but we're going to try and create our own now. The main problem that we have right now is that the player's on the scene and the player keeps track of his own score. The uh, issue is that if we put some UI on the scene, we could potentially put the UI as a child of the player, but it's probably not the best. So we're going to put the UI as a separate object. And then we have the issue of how that UI um, is able to be updated when the player picks up coins, when the player gets a different score. So let's see how we're going to solve this problem. Let's first up, we're going to create ourselves our UI for the uh, for the scene here. So we're going to add a child node. Now, the one I want you to add is the, um, the canvas layer. The reason why we'd use a canvas layer is because it will stay on screen as the camera moves around. So creating that canvas layer, I'm just going to rename this to um, UI layer. On top of that, I'm going to put the basic uh, UI element, the control node. Now the control node is the parent node for everything else that goes within it. We're only really going to need buttons and labels, but I'm going to put a top level control node because it's good practice. If you set the theme, I'm not going to cover themes in this video, but if you set the theme on the top level control node, then you'll be able to have every, every um, UI node underneath that inherit that theme. So for example, you could change the font and default font size for all of them just by changing the theme on the top level control node. So I've renamed this to UI and we're just going to um, set the, uh, the position for that UI control node. So with the UI, uh, UI node selected, just on this layout up here, you can set this anchor presets to just full rec. That just covers the, the, whole, of the, um, the whole of the camera's viewport. And all we're going to do is add ourselves a child node on top of this UI control node um, of type label. The label is just the thing that's going to hold some text. Once we have the label selected, I'm just going to call this uh, score text or score label actually. It makes more sense. And then in the, the text for that label over in the properties, I'm just going to type in what approximately what I want um, to appear. Now you can see that it does appear in this top left position inside of the um, UI control node. You can move it if you want to, and I might just drag it um, away from the edges. There's other things that you can set within that as well. Now, the simplest method, you can see that it's kind of white against a light background. It's quite hard to see. I think the text would be better as black. I'd also like it to be a little bit bigger. Um, so if you go down inside this score label, if you go down to the uh, theme overrides, um, if you haven't set up a theme already, um, and we're going to keep this simple and not do that, but you can override some of the basic things like colors. So I can choose to have a different font color. Just click on this. It's already set to black. Obviously, you could change the color here, but it's already set to black. So now I get a black font, which is much more visible over the top of that color. Also, you can set the font sizes as well. So if I tick this, it's going to um, change this. And I'm going to just choose 32 as the font size. Uh, it's nice and big. So just uh, save that. We can see what it looks like. Um, if you try running it... Um, in the last video, we added in some extra spawners. Or you'll notice that the enemy spawner, when we, um, the way we created it, we needed to add in the actual target for the enemy so that it gets sent to it. So if you did add in extra spawners and you didn't assign the player already to each of them, just quickly go through and uh, click on the assign and choose the player for every single one of the spawners so that the, um, sorry, that the game doesn't crash when you run it. So let's just quickly run this and we should see that as you move around the uh, score UI stays in the top left of the uh, of the camera um, and at the moment um, it doesn't actually update but we're just going to change that now. So if we just jump back to the player script um, right now we're going to create ourselves a brand new signal. So the way you do this is just by typing in signal and then giving it uh, a name. Usually it's a verb so um, scored uh, is going to be fired when we actually um, get a score, when we increase our score. And uh, we'll save this uh, and be able to fire this signal or connect this signal to anything that's already on the scene. 
if you just jump across, so with the player selected, just jump across the node and you'll see now that we have this signal, we have this scored, this is the player.gd, this is our signal that we can connect, just like we connected buttons or whatever else to. This scored will be able to be um, We'll be able to run any function on any other object. So we don't have uh, anything, any script currently controlling the UI and controlling what the score label is. So we'd best add that before we try connecting up the signal. To keep it really simple, I'm just going to put this script straight onto the score label. So I'm going to click plus over here. The script will be called score label. Um, I do want to put it in our scripts folder. So I'm just going to go and find scripts and put it in there. We have this score label script now. And because we have a script on it, um, we don't really need anything in here. We'll just save it as an empty um, an empty script. We can now connect that signal from the player, the custom signal, straight up to the score label. So we can see over here we've got scored. If we double click it or click connect, we can choose what we want to um, what we want to connect it to. So I'm going to choose the score label. It's given a name on player scored and click connect. So that now appears with this little green connector showing that it is connected to something inside this script. And because this is already connecting from the or extending from label, you can see that um, the string text is uh, the thing that we want to set. And so we're already extending from that. So it's super easy to fix. The um, only issue we really have is that uh, we kind of want to pass what the score is. Um, kind of want to pass this to the function um, or to the signal. So uh, it's pretty easy. Um, I can actually just pass a value. So I'm going to create a parameter of score and make sure that it's an integer value. And then all we really need to do um, is we need to set that that label text. So we just say text equals, and then we can choose what we want to display. So it's going to be score colon and then a space after that, uh, quote marks, and then we're going to add on um, the string, which is that score value that passed. So it has to be a an str turns this into a string because it's currently an integer value and we want it to dis to be displayed as this string so it sets this text to this whole thing score colon and then whatever number is passed to that signal all we need to do now is to actually pass that onto this uh, on through this signal when we actually score so if we go back to our player and we click back on the player script it's round about here that we add the script on um, and we set stuff to do with the bullet afterwards but we can just emit this scored signal and pass the parameter really really easily you literally just say the name of the signal you do um, emit and then inside the brackets for the emit you can pass the parameter that you want now i'm going to pass score because that's what the um, this value should be should be passed um, to this and it'll be picked up at the other end inside the score label function so we're just quickly testing this we should be able to um, shoot ourselves a snowman and pick up one of the um, one of the gems and our score should go up we will notice that it was kind of weird because the score had already started at one um, and I don't know what that'll um, whether we should change that or not also notice that the snowmen are way too fast so I may just change that too to change the enemies, um, I'm just going to click over by the enemy here and there's a const for the speed. I'm going to set this um, way down to something like, I don't know, like 30 so that they're um, nice and slow. And that should make it a little bit easier to uh, avoid the snowmen. And also um, back in the player script, maybe uh, default the starting score to zero. Um, the calculation down here means that it shouldn't actually be zero. We should still be shooting one bullet um, and that's a little bit easier to play and as we pick these up um, we should be able to get more and more bullets based on that um, that graph that we said for the increase in bullets the very last thing I'd like to add in because right now um, we can't die when we get hit by one of the snowmen so I would really quickly like to add that in so if we jump across to the enemy script we're gonna need to give the enemy a class so um, this is enemy script right here. I'm going to give this a, a class name of enemy. Uh, that way I'll be able to detect. Now it's it's a character body 2D. It's not an area 2D. Um, and that's important because when we go to the player, um, this player has this hitbox with a signal connected to it already. But right now, if we go over to the node here, we're seeing that the area entered on this hitbox. But 
the enemy isn't an area, it's an actual body. Um, I did mention it before. So there's a body entered signal that we can hook up to the player script. So double click um, on this body entered or click connect and then click on the player and it says on hitbox body entered and click connect. That should create ourselves a little function. If it just makes yourself some space up here. So we'll create this function that will be fired when another body comes into it. And more or less we're doing what we did before. We're just going to say if body this time, you'll notice that it passes the um, body function, um, so the body parameter right here. Uh, you'll see if body is enemy and then we want to do the thing where um, we'll load a new scene. Um, I probably want to just uh, hit the pass on this just now so otherwise it'll cause an error. Um, and then we're going to create this new scene that we're going to jump to when the enemy um, hits the player. It's pretty easy to do. I'm going to create myself a really simple scene. It's going to be a user interface scene. The top level control, we're going to call it end game uh, scene. And um, just look at this in 2D. Um, the top level control just fills up the whole of the camera. All I want to do is put a really simple button on it that allows us to restart. So I'm going to add in a child node of button. I'm going to call this um, play button because that's what it's going to do. And then we're going to hook up um, a signal to um, when we press the button to a script on this to load back to the main level. Um, this play button uh, let's fix it. If we go up to Inspector, the text I want to display is going to be just the word play. You can see it's pretty dinky, so um, I can go down to the theme overrides, go down to font sizes, choose a font size, a nice big font size like 48 I think will be good, and just drag it out into somewhere near the middle. So um, Control S to save this scene, and I'm going to make sure that's in the Scenes folder. It's called End Game Scene, and click Save. And then we can go and see if we can jump to this first before we create a script to jump back to the main game. If we jump over to that player again and we go back to that part of the script where we never quite finished, the way that you can jump to a scene, so I have this scene that I'd like to jump to. The way I can jump to it is just with the um, get tree uh, function and then you use the function change scene to file and then you can choose the scene that you'd like to load and um, because they're small scenes there's this is no reason why we can't do this this will jump load up this scene so that we're able to uh, be on a different scene from this point here so let's quickly test it so if I hit play and I run into a snowman I should be able to jump straight to this empty uh, scene here and um, clicking the play button doesn't do anything so I would like this to actually just restart the level again from the beginning so let's fix that part too so if I jump to this end game scene we can see that there's a play button I'm going to need to have a script somewhere um, I can have it on the end game scene or on the play button doesn't really matter I'm going to click to add a new script I'm going to make sure that it's in my scripts folder so again move to the scripts folder it's going to call going to be called endgamescene.gd and then click create the empty scene the empty script sorry doesn't really need anything but i do need to hook up this play buttons um signal when we press it so the pressed signal gets hooked up to the um, end game scene script um it's going to be called on play button pressed click connect so we've already done this it's pretty simple so we want to um jump to main game and the way we do that is with the get tree dot change scene to file and then we choose the scene that we'd like so my main scene I believe was called level dot tscn so I can test this specific scene so I have the end game scene here and um, ready to go and I can test this specific scene with this run current scene or the f6 key clicking play should go back to the main game and um, what I will do is under the project settings, so project and project settings, I will set the um, the scene that I want to start with as this end game scene because it would be quite good. I could work more on this. I could put some images in as the background. This could be like my starting uh, starting scene and. The, then from there you can click the play button to play the main game and it'll jump back to this when you die. So it is really simple like I said, but on this run, 
under run under the application you can choose which scene you would like to actually use as your start scene so i'm just going to choose this end game scene so that when i uh, if i close that now when i click play standard play or when i export this game out the starting scene is this one and that way when i click play it will jump straight into my um, main game just like this that's it for this tutorial series. I really hope you've enjoyed the series. I've tried to keep it really, really simple and I have tried to explain a lot of things as we've gone so that you're able to understand and start making changes to your own game should you want to. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the series, like I said, and I will be making some more videos in the future. If you've got any requests or anything you'd like to see, just let me know by dropping something down in the comments and well done for sticking through all eight um, videos of this it was a little bit longer than I expected I do apologize so thanks very much for watching see you later